Week two, Seahawks Patriots football. It's an interesting one this week with two teams that there's not much to know about them. And obviously being a Seahawks fan, I like what I saw when it comes to the Seahawks defense last week. I know what we have with the offense, a new coordinator this year, but I know what we have with Geno Smith. I know what we have with the receiving court. I know what's going on with the offensive line and the injuries that's you know, that happened on the, on the, on the line and what we're going to have of George Fant being out potentially. And I know that Kenneth Walker might be out, which makes this game even more interesting or questionable or confusing. We don't know what we have with the new New England Patriots because one, they beat the Cincinnati Bengals on the road week one. Not many people have that on their, uh, their guesses or their predictions going in to week one, the Bengals losing to the Patriots at home with Jacoby Brissett with a new coaching staff. It's, it was very interesting to say the least. And the Seahawks obviously have a new coaching staff as well. A new era of football. The first time the Mike McDonald led Seahawks are traveling to the East coast for a 10 AM football game, which Remember, Pete Carroll was very successful at. Pete Carroll actually was really good at those 10 a.m. East Coast games, which most teams actually have bad records during those games. But Pete Carroll's teams were actually really good at that. Pete Carroll was very unique when it came to those primetime games being really good, those East Coast 10 a.m. games being really good. Um, he was good at those wild card types of games, you know, like the, the, the different type of schedule that our teams used to. But we don't know what this team is. Um, 100% yet. We know the defense improved. We saw a lot on that week one performance. But we'll get to all of this. I want to start with the interesting uh, fact, stat, whatever that I learned today, which was since the NFL expanded its playoffs in 1990, 2 0 teams have given teams a significant advantage towards qualifying for the playoffs. In that span, 63.8% of teams that have started 2-0 have advanced to the postseason. 63.8%. So pretty much 64% of teams that start off 2-0 make the playoffs. Now, these numbers are not always, you know, the tell-all, be-all, tell-all, whatever it is, of making a postseason or whatever it may be. But... It is a nice statistic to look at. Much different than those teams that start off 0-2. Much different than a team that starts off 1-1. 2-0, 64% chance of making the postseason historically since 1990. So yes, there is significance to starting off 2-0. and And I would say it's even more significant considering the Seahawks' schedule. Obviously, it's significant for any team if it's a 64% chance. But the Seahawks' schedule... When we opened up the schedule to start the year, the first two things I th- saw was Broncos Patriots. And I said, if they're going to have a successful year, they better start two and oh, like those are two winnable games. Those are two of the easier games. Let's just pretend everyone's healthy. Like let's consider everyone healthy quarterbacks. When we get there teams, when we get there, whatever we're talking healthy teams after the Patriots, you have the dolphins. Like I said, consider two as healthy and playing really good team. Monday night football at the lions. Very good team. The giants is one of those three, one of those two games, the Broncos Patriots type of games, but then it's 49ers, Falcons, bills, Rams, 49ers, Cardinals who looked good. Week one, Kyler Murray's back jets with Aaron Rodgers, Cardinals, again, Packers, Vikings who looked really good. Week one bears who might be pretty good. They won week one. Also. And if Caleb Williams starts getting good, a good offense, you never know. And then Rams, that's the whole schedule. By far, unless the Vikings, you know, come back to earth after that week one victory and Sam Darnold's what Sam Darnold is. The only games I see on the schedule that I consider like those should be your three games you win. Like your must wins or like your best opportunities should be no excuse games to win is Broncos, Patriots, and the game against the Giants. Now, if you know me. I have other predictions. I think we were going to, you know, we might beat the Bills at home. I think we might win one of those games against the 49ers this year. I think we could go win in Detroit Monday night football. I feel like we always win in Detroit. 
I'm not saying those are only three games winning, obviously. But I'm saying when you start off 2-0 and and you have a chance that puts you at a 64% chance of making the playoffs, and those two games are Broncos-Patriots, these Broncos and these Patriots that we were seeing, you should have no excuse to lose those games. So a big statistical number potential for making the playoffs is on the line to be 2-0, and and you're playing a Patriots team who, first of all, is mocking the Seahawks this weekend. They're like the house or their lighthouse, whatever it is. I don't know what the hell they do. It's a lighthouse thing. It's like, it's like the mayor or like the Seahawks uh, raising of the 12th of 12th flag. They have a lighthouse thing. They're bringing Malcolm Butler. It's their 10 year Super Bowl anniversary. A lot of players from the team are coming to celebrate. And of course, Malcolm Butler who intercepted the pass on the one yard line is who's lighting the lighthouse thing. That's trolling the Seahawks. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, they're mocking them. And, I would just love to go beat those Patriots. I would love it. It's it's not the Tom Brady Patriots anymore. It's not the Bill Belichick Patriots. It's Gerard Mayo and Jacoby Brissett Patriots. Yes, they beat the Bengals, but that might have been a Bengals problem and not a Patriots being that good problem. So go beat the Patriots. Start off 2-0. and and, the, and then just the rest of the way, you got to just play good football. When you start off 2-0, it gives you a lot of leeway moving on the rest of the year. Uh, it, it, it makes a huge difference. Now, let's get to the reality of things. The Patriots, what are they going to do? Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball with Stevenson. They're going to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, try to take possession time off the clock and try to not let the Seahawks defense dominate the game. In turn, get the ball back to Geno Smith's hands and allow the Seahawks to put up points. They want it to be like that Bengals game last week where they won whatever, what was it, 13-10 I don't know the exact score. 16-10. They won 16-10. I mean, they were just the better team. I mean, I don't know. The the way that they made it efficient for them, 34 minutes of possession versus 25 minutes of possession, they took 10 minutes extra possession from the Bengals. They held Joe Burrow to 150 passing yards. They outrushed the Bengals 170 to 70. They only threw for 120 yards, but they don't care. Stevenson ran for 120 of those yards. Jacoby Brissett picked up 32 yards. They literally, no receiver had more than three catches, which was Stevenson out of the backfield with three catches for six yards. Any of the actual receivers were also at three catches, KJ Osborne. Like, that's it. Everyone else was at two or one. They are going to try to do this against the Seahawks. Their theory is going to be run the ball down their throat, get first downs, have 30 to 35 minutes of possession, have more possession than the Seahawks, have 35 to 38 minutes of possession. Don't let Geno Smith and the offense get the ball back and go score because if they're going to win, they want to win like this, 16 to 10, like they did against the Bengals last week. So two big things here. One, when the Seahawks do get the ball, it's really, really important they don't have a lot of quick three and outs and they hold on to possession and drive the ball downfield. Obviously I could sit here and tell you all of the defense's keys. The defense's keys is to slow down Stevenson and not let them dominate the run game. If they have to start throwing, we were the number one ranked defense last year in the NFL and number one ranked coverage defense on PFF in the NFL last week. If you slow down Stevenson, you make Jacoby Brissett have to throw the ball. You might have a game where guys like Tariq Woolen, Devin Witherspoon, Jordan Love, like they did last week, have phenomenal games, pick off the ball, shut down the quarterback, and you're going to win the game. But if you don't slow him down, it can be a very different game. So the defense is pretty simple. Stop the run. The offensive side is what my, where my concerns are. Two players are doubtful for Sunday. Kenneth Walker which is a huge deal if he doesn't play. And George Fant at right tackle, which is also a huge deal. We started the year with Abraham Lucas. We knew he was going to be out. They brought in George Fant. It's a great piece to have to back up uh, Abraham Lucas. He got hurt after 13 snaps, I think it was. And we ended up with Stone Forthsight. And so if we're running this whole game with Stone Forthsight and no Kenneth Walker, if both those guys who are doubtful do not play, the concern level gets higher. Uh, I'm not going to mince words here. I, it gets higher because that left side is great. From Connor Williams at center to Anthony Bradford played really well to Charles Cross actually had the highest rated tackle grade in the NFL on PFF last week. That that was fine. But the right side of the line was not very good. And if you're going to the third string and 
have a backup running back. I like Zach Charbonnet. I like Kenny McIntosh, but it's not Kenneth Walker. So one, I hope one of those two make a huge difference. Even George Fant makes a huge difference for the Seahawks offensive line and Geno's protection and the run game, all of it. But Kenneth Walker would be a huge missing piece for Sunday. Like it would, that one, that one would hurt a little bit because I, I, I like those other running backs, but I don't know how much I can trust Zach Charbonnet um, and Kenny McIntosh behind a banged up offensive line. And that's what saved us last week. Last week, and don't get me wrong, if you develop the run game right, those guys might do the same thing. So I'm not saying they're not, but obviously for anyone that watches football or watches Seahawks football would know losing a star running back like Kenneth Walker, a guy who I thought was going to crack a five top five to top 10 running back in the league this year, losing him hurts for even for a week. But if they can establish that run, then the passing game will be good and you can move the ball downfield and not hurt that time of possession that the Patriots are going to try to take away from you. And that's what happened last week. When the offense looked really bad, the only person that held it together last week in the first half was Kenneth Walker getting, you know, moving the ball a little bit. It took a long time to get any first downs, but Kenneth Walker is what kind of popped the offense open with some big runs, and then the offense was back. Once you have a balanced offense, good run game, and you know the passing game opens up and vice versa. So I'm really hoping this week it does not come out as a dud for the passing game in the offense and then we have to rely on Zach Charbonnet and Kenny McIntosh. And I'm also hoping it doesn't happen the other way around where Kenny McIntosh and Zach Charbonnet come out as a dud and then the passing game gets affected. The offense is going to be a really interesting question mark. I'm really not concerned about the defense. Stop the run. It was the number one rated defense last week on DVOA and on PFF grading. So like I said, not that word, but the offense has to find a way to move the ball downfield early and not have the stalls that they had last week. Because if it stalls like last week, it's not a rookie quarterback. I know Jacoby Brissett is not great, but it's not a rookie quarterback. They did it to the Bengals last week in Joe Burrow. They will run the ball down your throat and they will take away time of possession. And that's how, at the end of the day, they got a 10-0 lead last, last week and the Bengals couldn't recover. So... Early offense is going to be really important for me, whether it's run game, whether it's the pass. Get the ball moving. It opens up both sides of the playbook, right? It opens up the run game. It'll open up the passing game if one of those start working. And then they're not going to be able to control time of possession. And then I think I'm going to be very comfortable. Expect. Seahawks are three-point favorites. They're not huge favorites here on the road. It's good respect for them being three-point favorites on the road, but they're only three-point favorites. Last week, they were six-point favorites at home. It's going to be a messy game like last week. Hopefully not two safeties, a muffed punt, and an interception. Ten points were given to the Broncos last week on two safeties and two field goals that were from a muffed punt and an interception. So I hope it's not the same as that last week. But it's still going to be a messy game potentially. It's going to be a lot of back and forth, grit and grind, uh, whatever you want to call it. A lot of run games. A, a lot of between the number stuff. Jacoby Brissett's not making any big plays. That, that, that offense is going to be a lot of between the numbers, not a lot on the outside. And I think it's going to be one of those games that you have to tough out. So I think the Seahawks might actually only win by, you know, three to six points again. But it's really important that the offense gets going early, especially if Kenneth Walker's not there. Because if the offense gets shut down, he's not going to be there to save him. And that's going to give the Patriots way too much time in possession. So fingers crossed. Hope it all goes well. I really hope George Fant and Kenneth Walker play. I'm still confident in winning this game. My only concern, like I keep mentioning, is the offense can't start as slow as it did last week. Hopefully, we with the Ryan Grubb new offense, we start picking up and figuring out ways to get it moving early in the game. And I think they will. And I think if we come out 2-0, 2-0, 64% chance of making the playoffs already. It's not a it's not a gospel or it's not anything that's a guarantee, but it is interesting. So fingers crossed. I appreciate y'all. Like and subscribe. Uh, Any support means the world. And we'll be back.